Hey folks, uh, this is going to be a little bit different video than what you're used to seeing on the little stuff. Um, this is just me in my home office uh, looking at some data from all of the different testing that I've done with, uh, with the Ultralight 1103AC on 15 different kayaks. Um, by later in this week that number will grow to 17, but I have all of that information on a Excel spreadsheet that I'm sure you know here in a second you're gonna to want to hit pause on the on this video and just and just freeze frame it and look at it because uh, it's it's sort of interesting but the first thing I'm gonna do is look at um, <clears throat> look at the page the little stuff which you're watching this on hopefully um, this is this is the page and you can see all the different um, different playlist I have here. Um, the electric only, a lot of that is John Boat stuff. Um, smallmouth obviously is the biggest category. Um, we got a walleye one. I'll have to add more um, after I finish editing what I did with uh, <coughs> with Chuck Earls up on Erie. A lot of different things here, uh, but the one that I really want to feature and point out of 83 different videos that are that are torpedo based so what we're going to do let me see if i can do this with two hands we're going to go to I'm gonna click on that uh, zoom too far um and really uh, i'll just show you that we we have you know videos for all sorts of different models um here's a hobie pro angler with the the 403 there's the blue sky boat works there's a feel free lure uh pro angler and outback uh wilderness systems attack 120 and 140 jody queen talking about why brushless motors different uh there's matt elliott on his reservoir rig running a cruise 4.0 um all kinds of stuff here but Jackson Liskett install, uh, the inflatable with a Cruise 2.0, there's Scylla with a Vibe. So a lot of these are, are install videos. Some of them are just different, um, different tricks to get the most out of your, um, out of your ultralight. Um, there's a Saltmarsh Skiff and Travel 1103, a lot of different stuff, but what a lot of these have are their installation um, videos that show you step by step what is required. And I'm going to jump back to this other computer and show you. I wish I could get this file up. I used to be able to do that on um, on Facebook, where it allow you to be quiet. Be quiet. I'll call you later. Um, <clears throat> it'd be nice to be able to get this up. I, I may, if, if you want a copy of this, uh, maybe shoot me an email, jeff.little at torquito.com. Um, and just put in the subject line, you know, um, you know, requesting speed and range master spreadsheet. So what this is, I have different tabs for different motors, but we're really only looking at the, um, and I'm gonna hold this real steady. Hopefully you can get a screen grab there. Let me get the reflection off. Um, these different kayaks and, you know, I have the Wilderness Systems Attack 140 because that one does get the, the best top end speed of 7.2 miles per hour. I'm gonna make a note that, here, let me take that to full screen. That, that was done with the weedless propeller 1972 i did that one and also the the apex tier um, at 7.2 miles per hour um, two very different boats a 95 pound boat and a 38 pound boat and then as you go down in the weight you know you can see we get towards the bottom towards the slower numbers obviously we have heavier boats down here uh, you got you know the Titan 13.5. So they're all ranked in terms of of the top end speed with the Ultralight 1103. 
Uh, with the exception of these top two, I think all of them were done with the standard prop. So from, from the pursuit down, you should have a little bit better speed um, with the weedless prop. So uh, the, the video link list here is you know, the install or, or testing video. Um, this is range at the top speed. And then if it hits seven mile per hour, that's the range at 7.0. And then six, five, four, three, two, one. Um, and you know, let's, let's just pick a five mile per hour cruising speed. And you know, it, it roughly matches what the top end speed is, but it, but this range at five mile an hour, uh, is really important. Um, 18.7 miles at five mile an hour is, is amazing. Um, and it's, it's, you know, with the exception of what's that 18.2, who, whose boat is that? That's Old Town Predator 13. That just had a very good good glide. Um, that boat just carries well at speed. Um, you know, to be able to, to maintain speed once you get it up to speed, um, it's, it's the hull design, I think, is a big part of it and length of the, the boat. Um, that's another one that's worth looking at is the length of the boat. So obviously the, um, the attack at over 14 feet has a nice glide for its length, uh, but most of these other ones are 12 to 13 is is the average i would love to take um a boat that's over 15 i think the wilderness systems thresher 155 which is a discontinued model is something that would be very interesting to to test on um just to see what that high volume but but a longer boat 15 and a half feet would be would be interesting to test i may have to get one of those see if i can find one on ebay and and rig it up but uh seat ratio is something that i've talked about in an article i wrote for kayak angler magazine they published it online um i think what a year and a half ago so i i don't have this all filled in but i will tell you that these lower numbers 0.31 that hurts a a uh, a boat's performance and then higher numbers of 0.45 and here's a 0.47 uh, this one is the the Kilroy I think yeah, Jackson Kilroy HD and the video I did on that I tested it at many different seat ratios and the highest number I got was let me just explain what the seat ratio is uh, it's the percentage of the boat behind the seat so in other words it's a measure of how far forward or, or back the seat is in the boat and the average is actually 0.39 for for i forget how many i think i, I did this sort of spreadsheet before um with the it was actually with the one horsepower ultralight 403a and the average there was 0.39 so if it was particularly if it was over 0.4 something i actually put it in there um i'd have to remeasure for all of these different boats uh what they are i have some of that data yet it, it, you know somewhere i have that data and i just haven't totally filled it in yet but you know it's it's efficiency and speed um at, at any mile per hour and your top end speed is is really a ma measure of length of the boat weight of the boat and seat ratio so basically if the boat is riding flat at speed it's good if it's if it's shorter and there you have more weight further back in the boat and the, the bow pops up and, and really that's what this boat right here the the 2019 Outback suffered from I didn't get a full data set on that one just because I was sort of disappointed it only got 6.2 this is a boat that did really well with the um, the 403A that didn't do as well with the 1103, and it's because it's it isn't quite as long of a boat, and it's it's got the Mirage Drive hole in there that I think slows it down some. Um, 
in any case, the, the further forward you move the weight, and in, in particular the angular weight is the is the easiest weight to move forward. Uh, the more that the it doesn't ride like this, it rides like this with a stern squat of the motor, and it, it just goes fast. Um, that being said, if the, the apex tier didn't have a seat ratio of 0.31 and had a seat ratio closer to the 0.45 of the uh, of the the attack 140, um, I think that that boat could be clearing eight miles an hour. Um, so weight distribution is important, um, and so is having gradual taper lines uh, going into you know, at, at, at the bow and off at the stern, uh, you just, you don't want right angles. So we have, you know, the, the bottom of the boat going along and then it comes straight up. You create a little vortex of water, little, kind of like a hydraulic in white water that, that, you know, circles around there and it actually pulls the boat backwards. When the boat wants to go this way, it's, you know, if you have a gradually upsloping, tapering, stern and and the hobie kayaks do this really well they release water cleanly at the back and um certainly that's something that at the weight that the pro angler 14 is almost 150 pounds uh 6.2 miles per hour is pretty pretty respectable considering you know if you have a heavier boat like the titan that's getting almost half an hour half a mile an hour slower and has a sort of a boxy back end. It's a little heavier. Um, you know, th the difference there in speed is due to the stern gradually tapering up as opposed to going back and ending like a traditional transom, uh, traditional boxy, you know, boat style back. Um, I think the box style back where it's, it's a right angle works for boats that plane because it's going to release water cleanly because they have a, a <laughs> they just have a bigger motor on there that, that the water just goes flying straight out the back. Uh, we're working within the displacement range of speeds here so you need to release that water cleanly without that you know without that vortices of, uh, of water sucking your, your boat backwards. So releasing water cleanly at the back, you know, spearing into it cleanly in the in the bow and not crumpling and pushing water is also important. Um, seat ratio, weight forward works best. And uh, lightweight boats, awesome job with carbon fiber there. And, uh, and length, awesome job with the length of the boat. Um, but maybe you don't want a boat that isn't it, you know, is maneuverable, or you want one that's more maneuverable than a 14 foot one inch boat, and then you look in these, you know, in that range, that 12 to 13 foot range. So, there it is. Hopefully, that is helpful to some folks, and you've been able to do a real quick, you know, screen grab of this and just look at it and just look at the data and, and help you make a decision hey, which which boat makes the most sense for um, for the fishing that you want to do with the Torquedo Ultralight 1103. Thanks, see ya.